Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Maricola, fantasy artist and illustrator, and welcome to my Muddy Colors Art Tip of the Month. I love great texture in paintings. Now, isn't that just one of the best things about viewing traditionally created art? You know, to get up close and see all the textures that the artist achieved. Now, I'm no stranger to using texture in my own paintings. I especially enjoy using painting knives to move the paint around in predictable and unpredictable ways. But painting knives aren't the only tools that I use for creating texture in my work. Let's take a look at some of the other tools that I use to create texture. So I use a lint-free cloth to lift paint off of the surface in, in various ways um, to give some texture. I will put my finger underneath the cloth like this and uh, lift paint off or use my, my fingernail that's in there to kind of do fine lines and lift the paint off. I use a regular cloth. This is not a lint-free cloth, but it's a regular one. It's a little bit tougher material, but this is really good for bunching up like this to create some ir irregularities uh, in the cloth that you can use to kind of press down into the, uh, the painting and move it around to create different kinds of uh, unpredictable textures. Sandpaper is uh, a great tool for creating textures in your paintings. Um, after the paint is dry for a particular layer, you can work back into it with sandpaper to lift some of that paint off and scratch it away in various degrees. Important thing though, if you, if you do this, if you use sandpaper to remove some of the paint in your paintings, make sure you wear a dust mask. A uh, piece of plastic, this actually happens to be a uh, old shower curtain. This is really nice because it's easy to crinkle up like this. And then you can press this into your painting. You can move it around and do all kinds of interesting things and create uh, wonderful textures. This is actually a good tool for creating fire um, because of the extreme irregularity of these, uh, of these folds in the plastic. A chain is really helpful for, um, again, creating interesting textures, but you can bunch the chain up in your hand like so and you can apply paint to this chain and then press it into your painting or you can drag the, paint, the uh, chain across your painting uh, to move paint around and remove paint and whatnot. A wire brush is really helpful. Uh, again, like the sandpaper for removing paint from your painting, but also because it's a wire brush, you can purposely splay out some of these bristles and then scratch into your painting uh, to create uh, like a grass effect. So it's uh, really helpful for creating fine lines of grass. Playing cards are really nice. Um, they're a lot like painting knives, um, but they're a little bit better for applying smooth uh, layers of paint on your painting because you can, um, they're a lot more flexible. So it's, and, and you've got four different edges on one card here and uh, you don't have a handle in the way. Uh, another interesting thing you can do with your playing cards is you can use some other object, in this case a, a bolt, to distress the edges of the card so that you can then use this card to apply paint in different ways uh, and it not be so smooth of an application. Another product I use here is uh, blended fibers by Liquitex. This stuff is really nice. You apply this to your painting surface uh, first and you have to let it dry, but you can mold all kinds of different shapes and you can carve into this material. Uh, it's a very versatile material that you can use for applying textures onto your paintings and then you can paint on top of these blended fibers. Well, after I paint on top of it, I will use a lint-free cloth to remove paint on top of the fibers to kind of reveal some texture uh, from the paint that got trapped into all of those little crevices and pores of the blended fibers. Whatever tools you use, it's a good idea to figure out what kind of texture they will create before you begin using them in your paintings. So consider creating what I like to call a texture board. To create my texture boards, I prepare a painting surface like I normally do. This just happens to be masonite. And then I use painter's tape to block off little square swatches. I do create texture boards using other surfaces like canvas, illustration board, and birchwood panel 
because I also paint on those surfaces. Now, it's also a good idea to keep any notes that will help you remember how to recreate the textures. All of the textures you've seen me create here were done with acrylic paints, but could have easily been done with oil paints. So, experiment with unusual tools for creating texture. You don't always have to paint everything with brushes and painting knives. So get out there, make a mess, have fun. Thanks for watching. Bye.